what is going on you brothers um it's your dude mr international passport back again for yet another classic live stream uh first and foremost brothers how's my audio coming in am i coming in loud and clear i press a one in the chat if you can hear me loud and clear How's the audio, brothers? <sighs> how's, how's the audio? Press a one in the chat. If you can hear me loud and clear, brothers. Nate Kelly, I see you, bro. Uh, Todd Mike, Marvin Lloyd, thank you, brothers, for confirming. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. So, brothers, welcome back to another classic live stream. Um, I want to say, first and foremost, thank you to all the viewers all around the world, the subscribers, um, the um, those who have supported the channel over the past few years, the new subscribers, new viewers, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, welcome aboard. Um, brothers, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you comment. And of course, please make sure you support the channel. Join the Patreon and of course, uh, join, uh, hit the cash app as well. So tonight, brothers, we'll be speaking about an uh, Indonesian woman um which is going to be a classic live stream i dropped the explicit version of this stream on the patreon so go and check that out on the patreon diamond tier uh so before i go on any further we have a very special guest here called mr sca travel guy mr sca travel guy how you doing brother you're on mute bro for now can you hear me loud and clear brother how are you Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just chilling, man. Getting off of work. And I'm happy to be here. Awesome, brother. Awesome. Awesome, brother. Thank you very much for agreeing to take part on this stream. Uh, Indonesia has always been a country uh, of interest for me. I love that peanut butter brown skin, that long black hair. Uh, so I would say, brother, before we go any more deeper into the Indonesian woman, I want to know more about you, brother. So give us a brief introduction, who you are what you do in America, and why you started traveling in, in the first place. Uh, okay, so um, I am. I started traveling approximately 2000. Yeah, 2009 is when I first started traveling. I went to um, several countries before I went to Indonesia, but Indonesia is where I stayed for the majority of the bulk of my time uh, overseas, which was a good jumping point because it allowed me to go to places like Malaysia, Singapore, uh Indonesia, I mean, uh, uh, Philippines, Vietnam, it's a good, good place to be. So, um, yeah, so I started off, I work as a, I worked as an international school teacher. I worked at international schools and, um, yeah, the, so working in that field, it, it, I, you know, you got a lot of options in terms of where you want to go. So you can go, you can go to, um, a lot, I knew a lot of guys going to Eastern Europe, Europe route. You know, a lot of opportunities in Eastern Europe for international school teachers at international schools making good salaries. Some people go the Africa route. I, I, I met some guys when I was in Saudi Arabia that, that told me that Indonesia was where you need to be. And that's how I ended up there. So that's where I stayed for 10 years. Awesome, brother. 10 years. Fantastic, brother. Uh, so, brother, I want to ask you, obviously, one of the most important questions on the channel. Are the women in Indonesia checking heavy for brothers? Uh, when you say checking heavy, I won't. Well, well, let me rephrase that. It's yes and no. It's yes and no. And the the yes part is is that you got some women. It's more like I mean, much like any other place, but specifically there in Indonesia, just because it's a place that um, you know, you already got a lot of dark people in general because you got, you know, you got different tribes. Indonesia's got a bunch of different ethnic groups. Like they got hundreds of different ethnic ethnic groups a lot of those groups some of those groups of people those, some of those people are fairly dark like you would if you went there as a dark-skinned person as a black person you would often be confused with some of those those ethnic people that that are already there like the mm -hmm. ambonese the uh the papuans you know what i mean so there's already a a heavy presence of dark people so from that perspective that yeah they check them because a lot of those people are already already uh you know what i mean they already acclimated some of the women have preference towards you know the, the darker skin brothers and so that's already kind of built into the culture but then there's a no because you know that's for the locals like you know the locals are getting checked for like that 
But if you are, you know, once they know that you're a foreigner, then the preference is always going to be towards the white boys. You know what I'm saying? And I, I say that with no disrespect, but that's just what it is. It's kind of like anywhere you go, Africa, South America, everybody's preference is the white. Unless you go into like northern, northern Europe, you know what I'm saying? That's when the dynamics flip upside down where the preference is the blacks in terms of like the travelers. You know what I'm saying? So down there, anywhere south of the equator, preference is always going to be lighter, whiter. And the closer they can get to that, you know what I mean? Those are, those are people going to be, you know, have access to the to the top notch. I won't say it, all, all. They just got a bit more. They got a lot more options, a lot more women to open to dealing with Europeans, uh, you know, white folks, as opposed to, you know, black folks like myself, like yourself. You know, it's going to be a little bit harder, not impossible, not even, I won't even say it's difficult, but it's just going to be, yeah, you just got to put in a little more work, a little more mouthpiece. Okay. So let me ask this, brother. Um, out of all the different groups, racial groups of women in Indonesia, right? Mm -hmm. Who gives brothers the most play? You know, what, what tribes there in Indonesia is guaranteed to give you play or more than likely give you play as a brother? Well, I spent the majority of... I spent the majority of my time in um, in uh, Jakarta, which is on the island called Java. So obviously that's pop that's populated by the Javanese ethnic group. So that's where I got the most of my most of my play with. You know, most of the chicks I dated with most chicks I dated were uh, from they were Javanese, which is all good. Like you said, that's the that's the the typical ones that kind of look. You know what I'm saying? The ones that you can't. You couldn't tell the difference between them and the Filipino. You really couldn't. Mm. But when you start branching out, like you start talking about the Sundanese and the Balinese, Balinese tend to look a little more Indian, a little bit darker, longer hair. Uh, the the Sundanese uh, they got a bit more European shade. They're a bit lighter, fair skinned. Uh, you got the Ambonese. Um, they're a little more African looking. African, not not totally African, but kind of more. Oh, let me phrase it more like Indian. The women look more more Indian. So you got, so in terms of me, where I personally found my little my niche was definitely dealing with the Javanese women, which are the majority of the people on the island on the island of Java. Fantastic, bro. And would you say the the Javanese women are very good looking and attractive body wise and facial wise, brother? On average, yeah, yeah, definitely, man. I, I they're in my personal opinion, man, you, uh, you know, as a person who's been in Eastern Asia, I'm talking about Japan, Korea, uh, uh, Philippines, you know what I mean, Vietnam, a lot of these different countries, I personally prefer the Indonesian women in terms of the variety of looks that you get, I mean, the, the, the diversity in how they look. Like you got some that really do look Mexican. Uh, excuse me, that's you got some that really look Hispanic, South American. Then you got some that's got more of an Indian look, and then you've got some that you know are a clear blend between like some type of European, and you know what I'm saying, and something else. So, wh what was the question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good, bro. I mean, like, yeah, we want to know they're good looking. Cause obviously, your brothers, yeah, good looking uh, woman, body wise, yeah, and like the curves. Body. I like the, I like the, Slim thick thighs. I want to squeeze the thighs. I want to squeeze the man. The yeah, cheeks. I, I, there's not, there wasn't a day that went by that I wasn't, you know, my head wasn't turning. I mean, just you, even if a girl is fully, I mean, you, it's rare to see that, especially in um, Jakarta, like a girl fully covered, but normally she'll be wearing a head wrap, you know what I mean, like a what they call a jill bob over there. I forget, I think they call them a hijab or a hijra. I don't know what they call them. They call them variation of names but even if you see a woman wearing that and don't she's not necessary she's not off the market like she still be you know a woman still might be with it she still might be with the program even if she got the more con you know she looks conservative but that's just you know an outward appearance like she still might be with the business so in terms of body wise anyway like indonesia is just man like i said number one in asia in my opinion it, yeah, because you on oh no, because I've been in the Philippines. Philippines, they got a lot of women that look good. A lot of shapes tend to be kind of, um, you know, more towards the flat. You'll see a few, you, you see a few apple bottoms here and there, but you know what I mean. It's it ain't as abundant. In Indonesia is an abundance of apple bottoms and 
you like top heavies and all that. I mean, not too top heavies, which was, you know, kind of what I I don't like top heavy women, but okay. yeah, you you just you, you gonna see a whole bunch, man. Tall, short, you know, thick, brown, light, light, almost white. It, it's all there. Thank you, bro. So my next question for you, brother, is where is the best place for us to meet the best Indonesian women as black men? What city? And I also want to break it down further. What little spots are there to meet these women? Is it a park? Is it a gym? Is it a bar? But I want to know what city and what small spots should we be going there to meet this type of woman? Uh, Indonesia, you definitely going to, the best, your, ch your best chance of making anything happen is going to be in Jakarta just because of the sheer numbers. I think there's like 10, 15 million people just in that, you know, just in that big, it's a super big metropolis and it's got like hella, so I would compare it to like New York City, right? You know what I'm saying? It's like they got hella little different boroughs and on the outskirts, but Jakarta really is where it's happening. It's the business capital. Bali is, Bali is hit or miss, man. You could, you know, it's a lot of good stuff in Bali, but you know, Bali got a lot of tourists. You competing with all, a whole bunch of Australians and people from New Zealand and people from all over the world. And this is like, a whole just like a little clique of chicks that kind of like fly in and out you know trying to trying to you know earn money and all that kind of stuff you got some balinese women there that are from there but them you know to find an actual balinese chick a lot of them that's you know worth they salt then already bounced and already left went to the big island which is java you know trying to work you know work in a big company or going to school or something like that so your best chance of meeting anything anything uh, is in Java and the spots. Well, you you hit up the apps, man. The apps are surprisingly, you know, you cutting through a lot of red tape using the apps, man. The apps get you in the game pretty quick, and you and the and the chicks are pretty responsive, and they and they down and just like you know for nothing else they're like okay let's meet let's meet at the mall like the malls oh let me let me let me step back a little bit for Indonesia the hubs of any type of social activity are the malls. The malls are it because, you know what I mean? That's kind of like where the, it's like the epicenter of all the social life in Indonesia. All the families go to the malls. We talking about Monday through Friday, the malls be packed. Not only because it's hella hot and the malls are one of the few places that you know, you got air conditioned, you know what I'm saying? And they got, you know, they got little restaurants and eateries and everybody ain't there shopping. Everybody just kind of chilling. So the malls are kind of like where everything kind of goes down in terms of daytime. You know what I mean? You're just trying to meet a square chick. You ain't trying to meet no pros. And popping it, you know, when I say popping, I mean like just open your mouth and just start, you know, saying hey. And, you know, it, it, would, it also does help if you speak a little bit of um, Bahasa Indonesia is what the language is called. That definitely makes it easier. But in that big city, there's a lot of chicks who do, I mean, speak fluent English, you know what I'm saying? You go, you have a lot of chicks that are like, especially if you go to like the big malls, like the, they got some really big malls that like you see a Gucci in there, or you see a, like a Louis Vuitton store, like some of the higher end Western outlets, there's going to be chicks in there. Them chicks got money because they're in there shopping, they buying the stuff. So you just go in there, man, just open your mouth, you know, make sure your clothes is, make sure your clothes is iron, make sure your hair is cut. You know, make sure your fingernails is is nice and trim, and you smelling decent, man. You gonna you gonna have a good. I'm telling you, man. Your opportunities is gonna be wide open, man. You are gonna come out come out with something decent. I promise that. Okay, thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. Um, shout out to Mr. Conrad Grant for the two dollars super chat. I pre appreciate your support, brother. Thank you very much. Shout uh, out. Greetings, IP. Uh, blessings, brothers. Showing love. Thank you, both for showing love, brothers. Please hit the cash up in super chats. Uh, shout out to this channel. Uh, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Um, he says here, hello, brother. Uh, you got to join the Patreon for the explicit version on Indonesia. You're missing out. They're really super freaks. Yes, indeed, brothers. <laughs> you know? Shout out to Con Conrad Grant. Shout out to that brother right there, man. That's it, man. Subscribe you know, to the Patreon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, me and SCA Travel Guy recorded the uh, Indonesian explicit stream last week. Brothers, they are, they are truly freaks. They are freaks, you know. The, the whole Islamic facade and Islam facade, trust me, brothers, they're getting down in the bedroom, but that's only on the Patreon diamond tier. Appreciate you, Conrad Grant. Thank you, brother. Yeah, so, uh, no, listen, oh, oh, oh I bro. just wanted to add this in. If anybody, after hearing this, and they go down there, 
report back to headquarters, man. Let us know. Hey, hey, like I said, I spent 10 years there, but your experience might be a little different than mine. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Next question for you, SCA, is um, pros. Um, are, are pros a problem there in Indonesia? Um, you know what? I, I, man, as a rule of thumb, as a rule of thumb, just me in general traveling, I always try to stay away from that side of the game. Like, that's not, I'm not really the expert on something like that. I mean, let me rephrase it. You know, I've been in spots, you know, where they, where they have been, but I've been, that was like after I'd been there for a few years and got comfortable. And after I, you know, I got into a few social circles, so I kind of knew the ins and outs, you know what I'm saying, in terms of like how not to get caught up with the police. Um, but all those spots that I used to frequent, I didn't frequent, right? I used to go to occasionally. Um, all them spots is that they didn't, they didn't got shut down, man. So a lot of these, because a lot of businesses during COVID kind of, you know, Indonesia, their government really didn't have stimulus packages for the businesses, you know what I mean? So a lot of them just kind of folded. And uh, the women just kind of went renegade and they just all over the, really all over Tinder now, you know what I'm saying? All over Tinder, all over the internet. So it's really kind of wide open in that regard. So in terms of the pros, man, there's there's some um, you know, there's some uh, there's some honey traps out there, man. That I mean, just like anywhere else, man, you got you kind of have to use common sense, man. You meet a chick the first time you you know you meeting online, she talking about she need her grandmother's sick, she about to die, her grandmother's sick again, and all kind of this foolishness, like. Yo, man, you kind of, you just kind of got to be, res you kind of got to be aware, man, and understand, like, what the game is. Like, they looking at you as bait, and you got something that they want, which is that money, and, you know, and they, and they trying to, they, so that's, that's one of the differences about Indonesian women that I haven't, that was just different from any other place that I've ever been. A lot of them, them women ain't trying to leave. They ain't really trying to leave the, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got a whole lot of women talking about less. If anything, they want they want you to marry them and stay there. They ain't trying to leave. They ain't trying to go to no other countries. You know what I'm saying? Because they're quite comfortable and it's it's a great place to kind of live. You know what I mean? And plus, they, all they you know all their families are there. So a lot of them women ain't ain't trying to hustle you for no visa to get up out of there. They they're trying to invite you to come there and they want you to sink all your money into some investment that they you know all kind of wild stuff like that. So it's the game is a little different out there. But uh, the pros, man, they they're the pros and you know you just got to be careful and you know what there are some landmines out there that you can't step in landmines actual, actual landmines no i'm not no 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 because it was a, yeah during the war there wasn't nothing happening oh. in indonesia it, you know not i don't mean like physical i don't mean actual landmines i'm talking about like mines yeah, in terms metaphor. of yeah metaphorical landmines like you know you some chick you now adultery is illegal out there so if you meet a chick and she's married or she don't reveal to you that she's married because on their little ID card, it will tell you if they're married or not. So you got to understand what you're looking for when you look at that ID card, because technically if the police caught her and you and she's married, you know, that's a, that's illegal. You know what I mean? So they can, they can use that as an opportunity to extract, a, you know, a bunch of money from you. So I'd be watching out for stuff like that. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Mr. Keith Jenkins for the $5 super chat. Salute IP. Salute to you, Keith Jenkins. Thank you very much for your support. It means a lot to me, brother. Much love to you. Thank you, bro. Um, next question for you, brother, is feminism. Uh, is feminism a problem amongst Indonesian women? Mm, I don't, I mean, uh, let me, uh, I won't say not. In general, no. But if you go in like smaller, like upper, I'm going to say upper, what do you call it, like a more educated, more affluent uh, sex of society. You know, that stuff is starting to creep in. There's a, there is a lot of, um, in terms of like certain segments, a lot of uh, lesbianism going on. There, that's Jeez. happening. That's, that's not that's not uncommon. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite, only in certain like, in certain social circles. But in terms of the wider, the wider society, nah, that's, that's not happening. Also, brother, and brother, let's not um, let's avoid mentioning. Oh, kind of 
lifestyle yeah, okay. on, on the channel. Let's do it very alternative PG. lifestyles. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Alternative yeah, lifestyles. Keep, keep it coded, probably. We don't want to. We don't want to attract the wrong people. This ain't the channel for them. It's for straight brothers. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I do apologize. Yeah. Thank you, bro. No, no worries, man. No worries, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, next question for you, brother, is um, okay. Um, other races of women. Uh, obviously, in Indonesia, you find Indonesian women. Can I find? black women there can i find white women there can i find asian japanese women there brother and are they and, and are those groups of women also checking for brothers too if they are there good question good question um let me i gotta go through each one because like it well for my opinion each one is kind of kind of different so for instance like you if you meet um an english woman or an australian woman if she's not there like as a teacher like working at like an international schools, a lot of them out there are working at some type of NGO. More than likely, she's with. They came there with their family because Indonesia is not a. Um, it's not a place that really attracts a lot of a lot of women. It's a lot of it's a, a lot of guy. It's a guy heavy expat community. I'll, I'll just put it like that. So most of the women that you meet, most of them are, are attached. Like they, you know, they came there with their partners. Um, you know, they came there with their partners and they either in some extractive industry. Um, some of them are in banking, some of them, some other kind of, you know, whatever, whatever industry they're in. If you meet like a foreign woman, usually they came with their partner or their husbands uh -huh. or, you know, something like that. So, so that's sorry, brother. So, sorry, yeah. brother. So on average, um, what group of women are we likely to find out there apart from Indonesian women? Is it white Australian, women? It Australian, Australian, yeah. So white Australian, Australian. women. Okay. Well, it's close. It's proximity, right? Australia is really close to Indonesia. And are they checking for brothers, those women out there? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. They are. Like, you know, you, you. it depends on the circles that you're in. Like, if you get in, like, with the embassy workers... We got there's a ton of embassy workers. I met an Australian chick through the embassy, not the American embassy, obviously, but uh, the Australian embassy. You know, we hung out for a minute. Um, um, most of the, like I said, most of the women there, or if they're foreigners, they're either in, you know, they're either teaching, or they are in an NGO, or they would, you know, they they got a spouse that that they came there with. So it's kind of limited in terms of that, but Australian and I would say New Zealand, and even um, even uh, British women, or they'll make up the majority of like the expat women that you're gonna see. There's a few Black American women. Uh, I met one that was a lawyer for one of the big oil and gas companies. She treated me real nice. <laughs> she treated me real nice. Uh, yeah, she was she was definitely spoiling a brother, but but you know. Hey man, you you it's sand at the beach. It really is sand at the beach. So your your neck still gonna be twisting and turning, man. And when you go out with the with these chicks, you know what I mean? Because some of them are still, some of them are attractive, but some of them, you know, physically, nah, they ain't, they are not on par. They can't compete with these little Indonesian women, man. So they, you know, you are gonna be finding yourself in quite the conundrum, man. You trying to reckless eyeball and. You out on a date with the with the, you know, and she know you, you know, she know you looking, and she know you probably didn't get you you be getting down with them on the on the on the low, but you know you everybody trying to play it cool. So yeah, the majority you gonna meet Australian, British, New Zealand, and then uh you know you might meet a couple sisters, a couple, and I just I do mean a couple, but you know, nah, it ain't the place for sisters to be hanging out really. Let me ask this, brother. Um, this ties into my next question. Rich women. Did you come across rich women in Indonesia? Tons. Uh, and, and were they checking for brothers, these rich women? And what, what kind of rich women did you meet? Was it the Indonesian Tons. rich women? Okay, was it the Indonesian Tons. rich women? Or was it the yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to say yes, and yes, and brothers? yes. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes, and yes. That's the answer to all your questions. Yes, yes, and yes. The, uh, all right, so you you got and don't get it twisted like you know indonesia is a it, it's on the outside it's looked at as a poor country this is because of how poorly they distribute the the resources so tons of corruption in terms of governmental corruption it's kind of like the wild wild west you know what i'm saying anything goes if you got some money but anyway to make the long story short they got they got tons of women if they 
they they have money. They might come from rich families. Their families will spoil them, and and the families will spoil them. And you know, making sure they get the finest of everything, finest education. You know, they've been educated in 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 the Netherlands or Europe or I mean, the Netherlands and or England or or America, wherever Australia primarily. They they got the finest educations. Their families and bought them land or houses or cars, and everybody got a driver. So man, you you gotta know where to be. You gotta know how to angle. For, I mean, if that's how you looking for big game, you know you gotta have big game tools. You gotta be out there with your sniper, with your with your rifle. You know what I'm saying? You got to have your camouflage on. You got to have your equipment, man. If you out there big game hunting. So for the big game like that, you got to be in the right social circles, man. And the, and the thing about Indonesia, like when you out there hanging with them kind of, you looking for that kind of game, it don't come cheap, man. You it's, it's not gonna be, you know what I'm saying? You can't be hanging out the little dusty water hole. You got to go where they at. You got to go, and they be out there spending money because out there, the 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 stuff that you want to buy, like let's say a bottle at the club, we pay. 200 here, it's going to be 400 there. If you pay, you know, 300 here, it's going to be six. Just automatically double it. And that's what they're spending on a night in, night out kind of thing, man. So I knew I knew a bunch of dudes that had, you know, they were sugar babies. The dudes and, I knew were right, sugar babies. And, 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 and these, were, these were brothers, black men. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Black brother, men, white hold on, men. Hold on, what, what, what was your personal experience with dealing with rich Indonesian women? How did they spoil you? Did you smash? Break it down first, brother. And how did you meet these rich Indo- Indonesian women personally, brother? I, I want to um, know your personal experience, bro. Uh, personally, all right. My personal experience. Um, there was a chick that I used to that I was dating. I didn't know she was rich because she just worked a square job. She worked a square job, like uh, you know, like I did. We was working at the same school. And then, you know, as I got to, as I got to know her over time, she was, um, you know, just little stuff started being revealed. Like basically, like her parents bought a house for her and her husband, right? And I, so I had known her for so long that she had been married twice. Was on during the time I met her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I had never, I had never pressed upon her or nothing. Like we just always kind of been cool and stayed friends. And um, man, she was, I want to say this was around 2018, 2019. She had gotten divorced again. And her husband, you know, her and her husband had bought a house, or her family had bought the house for them. And then they, they were trying to sell the house. So she had just come into a whole bunch of money. So anyway, it was my birthday around that time. And man, she just put like, you know, $5,000 in my hand, man. It was like, hey, happy birthday. Was like, well, there you go. I'm just giving you an example. I'm, I'm the, and I'm not. Yeah. I'm not no Boris Cujo, or, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't Wesley, uh, West, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes or Wesley Pipes. I ain't living like none of them brothers, but, but that's how she, she was, she was loving me at the time. So she put like five G's in my hand, man. So, you know, happy birthday. And I'm like, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. So that's, that's did, one. Did you smash as well? Oh, the smashing was like, that had happened, you know. That had happened already. Like this was after she had gotten divorced, because I told yeah. her I, we we could never do nothing while she was married. Because that's me personally, from a karmatic perspective, I just that's not a line I'm willing to cross. That's so nice. once her once she got divorced and all that, you know, what I'm saying laid the laid the game down, and then one day she just man brought an envelope from the bank. You know, what I'm saying the envelope was about the size of a block of bread. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? And now she just put it in my hand and I took it and I said, thank you. Brothers, man, this is what I'm talking about, brothers. Please get your passports, man. Where in America are American women giving you brothers, rich American women giving you brothers five grand for your birthday? They ain't giving you nothing. But when you travel and deal with rich foreign women, they're loving you, they're appreciating you, they're giving you plenty of money brothers please get your passports man and brothers can we please get the likes up as well brothers can we please hit the super chats and cash apps that'd be greatly appreciated brothers thank you very much um shout out to mr john thomas for the two dollar super chat thank you bro uh did you feel safe in J- jakarta from radical attacks could you answer that sca uh yeah i'm gonna be quite honest with you because as um as a black person we just kind of blend in kind of you know what i'm saying like i told you there's already there's already brown there's already darker skinned people that kind of look indonesians like they wouldn't 
be able to necessarily tell you was an Indonesian. They might mistake you for an African, or they might, mis but they ain't thinking you British or American or anything like that. So that's the last thing you would get. So in terms of like being targets, or like you know, they're targets. They're targeting white folks. I mean, to be quite honest. Okay. Hey, thank it, you, bro. Good. Yeah. No. Uh, sorry, we, we missed that last part that you jumped off a bit, bro. It's oh, I'm sorry. Crackers, you said. Yeah, they, they, do it. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I said they're, char they, they're primarily targeting Europeans, or or if they if there's something like that, because like that the Bali bombing that went on went down in like I want to say '06, that was at an expat bar. You know what I'm saying? So, I I personally never felt unsafe. Awesome, thank you, bro. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, John Thomas Roberts. Can we please get the super chats out? Please support the channel. Uh, show love to the channel the way fresh and fit supporters show love to fresh and fit please donate to the channel super chat cash apps it takes me a lot of time to set up these interviews maintenance work technical issues etc etc patreon work so please um support me because time is money and i spend a lot of free time giving you brothers free intel on this channel so please support that'd be greatly appreciated thank you brother uh brothers next question for you brother is white worshipping um obviously I heard it's a big thing in Asia. When you were then in Indonesia, was white worshipping a problem there amongst the Indonesian women? You know, were they worshipping white men, white culture? Um, do they see black people as lesser than white people? Break it down for us, bro. White worshipping is also very important when dealing with Asian women. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. That's just that's just part of the game, to be quite honest. Um, to be fair, it, it's it 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 happens amongst the amongst the lower classes if i have to be quite frank about it like the lower classes are like super heavy into that like you'll you'll go and you'll be there right and you you'll notice like a, a woman like her skin is like really dark but then she's got like this white paint basically paint on her face looking ridiculous <laughs> they look like you know they look like dead bodies like you know when you when they in the casket if you've been to a funeral look how a body look that's what they be looking like and so me personally, I was just, I was, yeah, I never was into no, nothing like that. But you got to understand though, they like, you know, they, it's a place that was colonized by the Dutch. The Dutch stayed there for 300 years and never really made no type of investments into the, into the, uh, the, the, so, uh, into the society. They kind of just, it was just an ex, a colony where they extracted the wealth and, and treated them like slaves. So that, that, power dynamic of uh you know seeing white people is almost as divine that's really really prevalent you know what i'm saying and and, and kind of like in for instance i'll give you an example like in japan and korea they do not they do not like the japanese and the koreans they do not embrace they don't embrace like mixed race uh koreans or, or japanese unless they're like super exceptional like a uh like a naomi osaka or a, a Heinz Ward, they don't be they don't be embracing them. They don't let them join the military. Like you, basically, you are you are literally a second class citizen when you're in those countries. Like you can't vote if you're not a full blood Korean. But over there in Indonesia, and man, like they open up the world for the people like half breeds. Like if you got a half white baby, they they got like you know commercials, casting calls. Like yo, you got that half white baby, man, come bring them. Like we want, man, we'd love to get them on TV. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so, like, really whitening up is a real thing, man. It really does open up a lot of life, pros I mean, uh, uh, prospects in terms of people's, uh, the outcomes. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got a white baby or you, you got whiter skin, a lot more opportunities, are, you know, exist for you. Unfortunately, it's the real. So, um, so yeah, they're, they're reinforcing that. They're replicating that. In terms of whiteness being better and then black people obviously being inferior but like i said that particular mindset in my opinion was like on the lower rungs of society where you got women striving to get like to any old white person but the more the higher up you go the more exposed they've been to outside culture the more they know the differences between like africans and just any old black people i mean like you know what i'm saying like the more they can distinguish and di differentiate you're gonna have a much better time. You're gonna have a smoother time. Okay, and within the within the, the higher echelons of Indonesian society, the high class woman, mm -hmm. they're checking for brothers, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. They, they okay. definitely. Awesome, awesome. So, next question for you, brother, is 
dealing with different women at once. Me as a man, um, I, I, I am leaning towards having different foreign women girlfriends or potentially wives in the future. Mm. Um, in, in, in Indonesia, is it acceptable for a man to have five different girlfriends, four different girlfriends, but obviously the women themselves cannot have any side dudes or boyfriends. They only deal with the one man they're dating. But can men mm. dabble with different girlfriends or I didn't oh they're not about that, the woman. That's a tricky one because there is a um there is a culture of of polygamy there to a certain extent, like within the Muslim religion, right? You like I knew dudes I knew security guards who had like three wives. You know what I mean? These dudes making a hundred and seventy dollars a month. You know what I mean? He had three wives. But uh yeah, within that within the Muslim culture, and that's a smaller sect, like the more strict, uh the more strict, the more uh, closer to what do you call it, a Sharia. Yeah, that kind of stuff is still kind of tolerable. But within the within the larger society, I would say, or the more the more affluent, nah, or that polygamy is not really uh, no, it's not encouraged and it's not they don't yeah, they don't encourage it. They just don't. So um but to to your point, like as so as a as a foreigner trying to man, you gonna you gonna have to play your game a little bit different. So me personally, like I said, I'm me personally it was a. I mean, I had me a stable, but none of them, you know. I mean, I wasn't married to none of them, so I wasn't trying to have like multiple wives. It was just like I just had roster. I just had a roster, a little stable, you know what I mean? Three, four, in the in a time, you know. Anyway, um, for that, for that, the thing, the thing that's good about it, Indonesia is a is a, is a great place. So, for instance, like let's say you want to go get a cell phone. You go get another cell phone. It ain't like our countries where you got to go show your show your government ID card with the um, you know, the social security number. I don't know what y'all call it, but we got the social security card, and you got to sign a contract. And nah, over there you just got a phone, pop in a SIM card, so you can go get your little burner phone. That's my, you know what I'm saying. And go mm-hmm. get you a SIM card and just have you, you know what I'm saying? Like this is the one you give. This is the number that you use to for business and this is the number you use for everything else and you can kind of and get away with it like that you know make sure to never the never the twain shall meet so you keep them phones separated and you keep your business separated and everybody be none the wiser and you all good awesome thank you bro next question for you brother is body count um uh, obviously um i'm looking for low body count women and virgins um mm. do um do indonesian women have what was that, Nate Kelly? My have to pause. What do you mean, bro? What's happening? Yes, brothers, can we get the likes up, brothers? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna pause the stream for a few seconds now for everyone to get the likes up. I hope we yes. don't start singing, brother, because I ooh the singing. I mean, I, <laughs> I dig the voice, I dig it, but can we get those likes up? Can we get those likes up? Get the likes up, man. Boys. I'm, I'm gonna start singing. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm gonna start singing the new Kendrick Lamar song. No, the, no, the heart, no. Part five. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm gonna wrap it out. You know, I, uh, I so appreciate please. the Kendrick effort, but he, you know what? I don't think he was really serious about. It. I mean, this was a good video. The visuals I thought were interesting, but mm. the song you ain't slamming that in no club. You ain't slamming that in the car. You just kind of okay. He on to something. Yes. Uh, no, I, I like the song, bro. I think uh, he's the flow is incredible. I'm waiting for the album. The album is going to be good. Uh, the flow, the nice flow is good. Yes, yes right. Yes, yes. Um, brothers, can we get Telly 75 likes? And while we do that, um, I'm going to have to... Hmm, okay. I'm... Interesting. Chinese sisters in Indo love black men, but their parents got cash to try to break it up. Is Shout that out true? To... Is that 55? I can't read them Roman numerals. Is that... Brother number, I don't know this LXVVI. I don't know what that is. I can't remember Roman numerals. Is that uh, true, brother? Chinese women and Indonesian women love brothers. Yeah, yeah, I would say that that's true. Yeah, yeah, I knew I knew a few brothers who had babies, who had wives, uh, who had, who had um, ended up marrying Chinese women. But I'm talking about the Chinese Indo women. Yeah. So this whoever whoever this is LXVVI, VII, whatever. Uh, yeah, they know what they're talking about in terms of um. Yes, a large, like I told you, it's a large Chinese Indonesian population out there. And uh, those women are, like I said, they try to keep them, they try to keep them isolated. But actually the north and 
the north is a is a big area for like the Chinese and the Africans. Like they kind of like have to coexist in the northern part of Jakarta. And um, so you got like little like humongous enclaves of just Chinese people, and then you also got humongous enclaves of just African people. And so yeah, they yeah ab- absolutely you'll be seeing them. You know, you'll see them mixing in together. But yeah, if the family's got money, oh no, that's embarrassing, right? That's embarrassing to the family. So they ain't gonna mm. want. They ain't gonna want to see. Unless I will say the exception would be, unless it's like you know, it's a brother who's like, you know, who got, or who comes from a wealthy family, or he himself has money, and you know what I'm saying, and he, you know, he's proven that he can take care. You know, all kind of it's all kind of nuances to it. But for the most part, just in general, yeah, I would. The Chinese people ain't approving of that. Okay, thank you, bro. Uh, brothers, continue to get the likes up, please. Get the likes up. Or else I'll, I'll pause it and sing again. The likes are looking much better, but let's get the likes up, please, and support the channel. Thank you, brothers. So as I was saying, brother, uh, body count is very important to me. I want virgin and no body count woman. Can I find that there in Indonesia, or is the women that have high body counts? No, you can definitely find that. Um, like I said, me, personally, I like my meat seasoned. I think we spoke about that before, so I was never, <laughs> I was never on the lookout for no... <laughs> for no virgin meat so um but yeah they got they, they're available um you you actually the weird part is you will find a lot of women who are like virgins well in their 30s sometimes even in their 40s huh. and so yeah you'll find a lot of women to hold on to it man um yeah if you t- if you go into patron i think i spoke about one of those such situations that i had encountered and um yeah, like I said, not my flavor, neighbor, but uh, for those brothers who are out there seeking it, yes, you, you. Let me put it this way: you're gonna find more of them out there than you will out here, where I'm at, okay. where you at, definitely. Brother, let me ask just right. So, on, on average, across Indonesian women, on average, do they have high body counts? On average, mm, I'm not gonna. Say, I'm gonna say no, to be quite honest. Um, so when you say high body count, you're talking about like women who are just out there promiscuous. If you meet yeah, a woman, so basically, to me, brother, any more, any anything more than four is a high body count for me, bro. Well, if you if you out on those social scenes, like particularly like where expats hang out, the, there's a high likelihood that that woman doesn't been, you know, what I'm saying she doesn't had multiple partners, right? That's just the that's just the game. She's hanging out in those social circles. But not always. That's not always the case. There are exceptions, but I would say as a general rule, if she's hanging out where foreigners be hanging out, yeah, you already know, man. That's that's all over the, the world. Like, wherever they congregate, more than likely they be with the program. So that means they done done that. They ain't, they ain't their first time at the rodeo. But if you're talking about just meeting a square chick, that's, you know what I'm saying? You meet them at the mall. You know what I'm saying? You met him on. You met him at school. You met him at somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I wouldn't say nah. Because see, here's the thing, though. The 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 families there, they aren't. Um, it's, it's a lot more shame involved. Like if a woman like to say she just get pregnant, you know what I'm saying? It's like, man, if they get pregnant like out of wedlock, it's a big deal. It's a big source of shame for the family. So they be trying to, you know, they be trying to, man. I mean, Scarlet Letter is like the least of their problems. They be having, the, they sometimes they just get totally outcasted from the family. So, you know, a lot of chicks don't, they be, they be kind of, you know, be cool about how many, you know, because they put themselves at risk. And a lot of, and I hate to say it, a lot of times, you know, they're not using protection just because it's not like they don't have sex, they don't have sex ed in school. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of women mm-hmm. are just kind of like, you know, take and they really are taking chances because they don't even know, like you know what what to do with it. You know, and so it's not it's not cool to be out there spreading it around like that, especially because you risk getting pregnant out there. Like getting pregnant early, premarital premarital pregnancy is not cool. Okay, thank you, brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to John Thomas for the four pounds five pence cash out. Thank you, John Thomas. Appreciate you, bro. My mod. Uh, thanks for the shows especially asian countries no problem brother i appreciate you brother for the support it means a lot to me thank you bro brothers please hit the cash up and super chats to, to support the channel that'd be greatly appreciated thank you uh next question for you brother um are indonesian women wifeable in your opinion and why why so yeah definitely definitely wifeable man um 
Well, because, like I said, they're more, they are uh, just kind of naturally, culturally, like, geared towards family. So, like, you got a lot of women that are just, you know, really want to commit to making a relationship work. But um, the, 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 also the expectations are is that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And by that, I'm almost almost 100% certainly just talking about financially. You provide, you know what I'm saying, your money right. Because, you know, that's that's because they're trying to escape from that, especially like you talking about women from lower classes. Like, you know, they've been, man, life is real precarious there, man. You know what I mean? There's people living from like off of two or three hundred dollars a month making it happen. You know what I'm saying? So they're trying to escape that economic precarity. So if they latch on to you, that's kind of like what I'm not saying 100 percent of the time, because like I said, sometimes you're going to meet the rich ones or you meet the ones that got really, really good jobs and. They ain't looking for money. They're just looking for companionship or or they're just looking for that thing. You know what I mean? You got to bring the wood. Um, so yeah. some of them, like I said, but, you know, some of them you meet, they come from struggling families. They're trying to escape that. They're trying to escape that economic precarity. So they're looking for financial stability. But if you can provide that, man, you got you a good wife. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Um, next question for you, brother, is obviously – Let's say I go to Indonesia, I find me a virgin wife, okay? I like her a lot. I want to bring her to America. Um, will she change to American ways or will she keep to Indonesian culture and reject feminism and all the BS in the United States of America, brother? Or will she change okay. to American culture? That's a good question. First and foremost, you're going to have to find one that's even willing to come over here. Because most of them, I won't say most of them, unless they've already kind of, like I said, been cultured somewhat they don't think they don't ex they don't even think of the world outside of indonesia right so they're not even thinking about europe and america so you gotta like so if you find one that's even willing to go it, you know you, it might be some some hurdles you got to go through because indonesia is sometimes it's very difficult to get a visa for for them you know what i'm saying because you got to have x amount of money in the bank before they can even walk into the embassy and, and apply for the visa they got to show that they got they got to demonstrate that they got financial means and you got to sign for i mean you have to uh what do you call it sponsor them when they come over so um if for them to even get over here it's a, it's a it's a big hurdle and then it ain't a whole bunch of them over here you know what i mean it's not like the filipinos man there's tons of filipinos out here so when they get out here it, they immediately like click up with a with a community, right? And then they and they and they off to the races. You know, what I mean, they're looking for the the exit. But for the for the Indonesians, it's not large communities, not very big, so they ain't really they ain't really as eager to get out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just you know leave as soon as because it ain't that easy, and it's kind of it's way difficult to get out here. Filipinos a lot easier to to get here and stay here. Because they got family networks and all that kind of stuff. Indonesians, not so much. Awesome. Thank you, bro. And brothers, make sure we hit the cash up and super chats, please. And you can also super thank as well uh, the video. It's a new feature that I've enabled on the channel. So send your super thanks, super chats, super uh, cash apps. That would be greatly appreciated. Please support the channel. It means a lot to me. A lot of hard work goes into this channel, maintaining and getting new people to interview, plus the Patreon work as well. So please support the channel. That'd be greatly appreciate. Thank you. Brother, would you say Indonesian women are conservative or liberal? Mm, I would say, well, uh, I would say, I would say it depends, man. It really does depend on like what the, the social strata that you meet them in. Like if you're talking about less educated women, they're going to be more conservative, right? And I think that's, that's the truth for any like society. You got people who have been exposed to more ideas, the broader ways of, of different ways of thinking, they might be a bit more liberal. But just in terms of like in comparison to Western, I mean, in, turn, in comparison to Western women, I would say Indonesian women are more conservative just in, in general. Like they, even after all that exposure, they would still prefer like family settings and, you know, they're still, still more family oriented as opposed to like, oh, I'm independent. I can do it all by myself. No, nah, that's still, even if they do have different views in terms of, you know, uh, like, people in terms of what's right and wrong good or bad they're still gonna lean towards that family 
more that family structure kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to, oh, I'm independent. I got this. I don't need no man. All that neck rolling. No, nah, they're still going to lean more towards the family, you know, being a wife, all that kind of stuff. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, what about religion? Uh, are, they, are most of them Muslim or Christian or atheist? Oh, you still go, you're going to find a lot of, you. I mean, the majority of the country is Muslim, so you're going to find a, a lot of women that are, man, I, man, I met women during, the, during Ramadan. They be like, man, we can get down, but I got to hurry up and get up and pray, man. So let's, you know what I'm saying? We got to step on it so I can pray and then so I can start my fast. So, you know, you got that. Yeah, even during, even with that, they're still, you know, they're still observant, like in terms of the religion. So, um, yeah, majority of women are, are Muslim. You're going to find some Christians, not a whole lot of Christians, but they're, they do exist. Um, and in Christian, like there breaks down very, like on, you know, you got Christians in terms of, uh, there, they break it down. Like Christians and Catholics are not the same, like they're different. And then you got the Protestants. So how they, it's really, really a religious, um, how do I say it? a religious conscious country? Like you, oh, you have to declare a religion on your on your ID. Like as a foreigner, when you travel there, you got to declare some type of religion. As an atheist, that might not you ain't gonna be able to get into the country. You got to you got to tell them something. You know what I'm saying? They want to know that you that you believe in some 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 kind of teachings that be because I mean they've got it's a multi uh, what do you call it a multi plural what's that called when you got a whole bunch of religions, whatever. They got a bunch of religions, like uh, Islam is an official religion, like the majority, but they also observe Buddhism. They also observe, um, uh, um, uh, uh, what am I I talking about? Uh, Hinduism. They also observe Catholicism, Christianity, Protestant. So, but you have to declare religion on your ID. And even as a foreigner coming in, you got to declare something. So even if you don't practice, you're going to have to put something on that paper. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Mm-hmm. Uh, next question for you, brother, is um, social media. Um, is that a problem amongst the women, uh, amongst Indonesian women, and particularly between the ages of 18 to 23? That's my sweet spot there. Um, is social media a problem amongst those ages in terms of them clout chasing or having simps uh, DMing them? Women exercising the options man, for social media. The, you, if oh man, like social media really opened up. Like for for instance, I didn't know, I didn't know that Bali had just become basically become a hub for like girls doing the OnlyFans out in what? Indonesia. Yeah, Pause. man, I've had ex students. Yeah, it's been like that's the Indonesian hub for the OnlyFans because you know Bali's got a bunch of villas and like you know five star hotels with the, and you know relatively cheap so. Girls going to set up there by the pool and do their photo shoots and whatnot and be having their OnlyFans and get it popping like that, man. So, um, yeah, oh, yeah, they definitely using and abusing that social media, man. It's just, it's just, but they do, they was doing that before the OnlyFans stuff. You know what I mean? They was on Instagram flexing and it, social media is humongous over there. It's huge. It's huge. Oh. I think the most okay. Twitter users in the world are from Indonesia. I think Indonesia has by far the most Twitter users per capita. Interesting. That's a that's a red flag for me. Thank you, bro. Mm. Um, next question for you, brother, is are Indonesian women feminine and submissive? And tell us why they are. If not, tell us why they're not. Feminine and submissive, brother. Oh, yeah, man. Like I said, um, uh, ooh, why they are is just because culturally, you know, women are expected to be women expected to maintain a certain maintain a certain look you know what i'm saying uh but now they don't well some of them do man i mean yes they are like even some of them like dress really really you know really really short skirt short dress pumps heels all that makeup hair yes all that and then even the ones who be like with who be more conservative still be dressed up with the heels the pumps and the you know they just have the cover on they just have the the hijab on so yeah they they're definitely way more feminine and, and don't mind being feminine and yeah don't all of them you know aspire to look good to the outside world you know what i'm saying awesome thank you bro mm-hmm. and next question for you brother is so brother so you're telling me they 
you know, they paint their nails, they have long hair, they go to beauty salons, they rub men's back, rub rub men's toes, cook for the man, clean up the house, look after their children. I can get that from Indonesian women. Yeah, definitely. Or if you can't, you know what? I won't say that listen, you meet a woman, she might not be doing that, but you know, maids and maids and servants are so easy to buy, man. We're talking about like buying a maid for like I won't say buying a maid. You hire a maid for fifty dollars a month, a hundred dollars a month, all that, you know, you want massages, this is like five dollars and they'll drive up to your house and give you a massage. So so some women are not into all that part because it's so easily accessible because they got applications on your phone where you can literally order a massage and they'll be there at your house and stomping on your back in like a half an hour. You know what I'm saying? And so if that's what you want, yeah, it, it's accessible. You don't need, they won't, they don't necessarily need to do that, particularly like in the upper ends of the upper echelons of the society. They're not doing that kind of manual labor no more just because they don't have to. Cause you know what I'm saying? You get on the phone, order a maid, they'll come through, clean up your place, cooking. Yeah. They still might be into doing that, but, but the other stuff like that, that manual labor, or cleaning the toilets and all that stuff. No, they you can. There's an app for that. You know what I'm saying, and it's cheap, and it ain't costing you nothing. Really, it ain't costing you nothing. Awesome, thank you, bro. Uh, brothers, send sending some cash apps and super chat. Support the channel, brothers. Please support the channel. That'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you, brothers. Um, next question for you, brother, is uh, clubs and bars. Um, how's the whole vibe and scene out there in Indonesia? Clubs and bars. Did you meet women through clubs and bars, or would you tell brothers to avoid meeting women through clubs and bars, bro? Uh, clubs and bars, you know what? I would say in terms of like if you – it depends on what you're going out there for. If you're just going out there for business – I mean, if you excuse me, you're going to be out there like let's say you got a, you got a contract, you got a long-term project, or, you, or let's say you set, you're a digital nomad, you want to set up there for six, seven months. But the clubs and bars are where you're going to go to to make your connections. You know what I'm saying? Do business because that's where business getting done at in these clubs and bars because that's where guys congregate. Uh, so in terms of meeting chicks there, you know, the bars and clubs, you got a whole bunch of bar flies. That's what they do. That's You know, they in there, you know, for after the meeting's over. Like I said, not all, but some, but a lot. Um, I personally would recommend that there ain't no need for that, especially, excuse me, Especially if you're a half decent looking young brother or old brother, whatever you you still you know you still somewhat put together, get on them apps, man. You meet a square chick and then you go and hang out. And let her take you out to the to the spots. You know what I mean? Because she ain't gonna take you where the where the uh, the, the word in in uh, Indonesian is called ayam. Ayam means chicken, and that's what they call the you know that's what they call the pros out there. So you ask them, you know, is it's gonna be ayam. Is it just ayam at the club? I don't want to go. She's like, no, no, I am. So if there's chickens out there, they ain't going to take you there. They're going to take you to where, you know what I'm saying, everybody's on the up and up and, you know what I'm saying, it's young professionals and that kind of stuff. Awesome, brother. Um, I know you're very big on online dating, so can you tell us what apps or websites you use to meet Indonesian women? And how mm. did you um, find out Indonesian women that were worth meeting, you know, like professionals, young college students, um, you know, ones that are actually worth meeting and, and not pros. So two questions for you there, brother. Apps or websites you used and how did you filter out on the good Indonesian woman? What was your criteria? Well, my my experience, like I said, I was I was there when Tinder was just like started. So Tinder used to kind of just be only for like the girls who spoke English, basically. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so Tinder, once that it started getting, once the pros got wind of that one, we just st- stopped using that one. And then it was just, um, okay, Cupid, um, okay, Cupid, uh, Hinge is pretty, Hinge is pretty, uh, uh, um, uh, it's pretty viable at this point, but o- I would say, okay, Cupid has probably always been pretty good for me. Um, what, what was I saying? The other ones. Oh, how did I know? Like which ones? Well, you you'll know. Like for instance, if you if you on their profile and they got a picture in the snow, that means she didn't been outside the country and you know? she didn't usually been to a, um, you know, she didn't usually been educated or, or at least been tra- traveled to a certain extent because ain't, ain't there ain't ain't no snow out there. So if you see a snow picture, you know what I mean. She didn't been somewhere 
in Europe or in America. And, and so she, you know, she's got something going on, got some money somewhere. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, next question for you, brother, is um, STD and STI rates in Indonesia. Is it high? Is it low? Is it medium? Um, is, yeah, is it high there, brother? Amongst yeah, women? I would say that I would say the gonorrhea is definitely high out there, man. You, they've got um, unfortunately they because the prevalence of um, antibiotics is you don't need a prescription to get an antibiotic. You just walk to the local pharmacy and order it off the off the shelf. So um, unfortunately, the, the gonorrhea strains are going more and more resistant to that any to the antibiotics. So the any so yeah, you definitely want to um, cover up if you're going out there. And you, you know, call yourself getting down and dirty unless you, both of y'all are going to get tested. Yeah, those, even though gonorrhea is not like life threatening, it, man, that super strain is not pleasant. I ain't never had it, but I've known people who have, um, who have had encounters with it, man. It just wasn't pleasant, man. Jesus. Um, but, but when you were meeting women, did you do a test first? Did you time to go to get a test before you smash them or you just use protection all the time? Uh no. Well usually usually if uh, usually the chicks that I'm talking about, we actually court it for a while before we you know, before I before we did anything. So then you know we so talked sorry? You courted, courted for a while. Courted, courted, yeah, yeah. What does that we mean? We courted for a few weeks. Like we went out. Okay. We went on dates, you know what I'm saying? And then we you know, that conversation will come up. And then, you know, we discussed that and then we, you know, exchange paperwork and whatnot. So that would be, yeah, that would be my best advice to people is, you know, yeah, it's, if you meet somebody and you're going down that road, I mean, if you're talking about something long term, um, yeah, exchange, you know, exchange your, your, your testing history. But if you're talking about just one night, man, just go ahead and um, keep, you know, best bet. The rubber is everywhere, man. They ain't. Even though it's a conservative country, you can get rubbers at the family mart. So just go in there and buy you a pack for less than a dollar and, you know, take care of yourself. Awesome, brother. Uh, would you say um, Indonesian women are materialistic? Or no? Not, so, not more than any woman. I would say any, mo- most women are materialistic, right? Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't say that they're extra material. Well, you got some of them are just, you got some of them are living in just abject poverty, right? So they, but to our materialistic and their materialistic is two different types of materialistic. Like some women, they just want you, man, if you buy them a phone, you know what I'm saying? You, she's going to be rubbing your back, you know what I mean? We ain't talking about no Apple. We talking about an Android. It's like a, uh, what do you call it? Op- Oppo. You know what I'm saying? Oppo is a big deal out there. <laughs> You know the Oppo brand uh, or a OnePlus or some man. She, you know, you the man, you the man. You buy one of them because I mean, even though OnePlus is now, they're like a thousand bucks out there. That's the biggest thing, really. Mobile phones. Like if you meet a chick and you bought her a mobile phone and it cost it costs more, you know what I'm saying? It costs more than a few dollars. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, you gonna be yeah, you gonna have a fan for life. Fantastic, awesome brother. Um, next question for you, brother, is um, bad parts about Indonesian women that we should know about uh, that you that you can see on that you've noticed that on average when you're dating Indonesian women, a common commonality that's a bad trait from them, bro. Oh, the jealousy is is definitely the jealousy can definitely lead to treachery. And I, for example, like I knew a cat who was dating an Indonesian chick and then all you know um th- things were going well and then one day he got caught you know doing something with another chick and the girl that he was dating man she had him thrown in jail because you know all she had to do was come come up with some cockamamie story about how he hit her or did something to her and the police is not they that's one thing you definitely should know police ain't they don't want to hear nothing you got to say and in that case, like you got to tell it to the judge if you ever get in front of the judge. So, um, yeah, she had a, she had him um, thrown in jail and had him thrown uh, uh, deported from the country just on some stuff he made up, all because she was she was angry. So I would say because they know how vulnerable you are in terms of 
from a, a visa perspective, like the government, it really is. Um, they don't they don't view us as special people. Like you know what I'm saying? They, you just hear you just a foreigner, whether you on a long term visa or a short term visa. You still just a foreigner, and they don't they don't really care. They don't really care what they how they treat you. It, not let me phrase that. If there's a discrepancy between Indonesian and a, and you, they choosing them all the time. That's just mm-hmm. the way it's going to go. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be prepared for that kind of stuff. So you always, you know, if you dealing with a woman, you always got to know she got that card in her back pocket. And she, you know, some of them will use it. Some, most of them won't. I will say that. Most of I ain't never had no woman threaten me like that. But so I had, I knew some guy, but some of my, some of my friends, they, they was out there doing egregious stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like sl- sleeping with sisters and all kind of all kind of shenanigans. So they were really doing some greedy stuff. So, so, but the women can be very vindictive. That's the truth. I also say all of them can be that. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Uh, next question for you, brother, is cold approaching. Uh, did you cold approach out there in Indonesia? Would you say it's looked down upon? Mm. Or did you actually cold approach there? And how, what was your success rate in cold approaching? Uh, man, I, I think I bought one chick my whole 10 years, like on some, just riding by on a bike, <laughs> just kind of like, hey, what's up? Like that. Eh? No, nah, out there, it's kind. It's not common to just be just screaming at chicks on the street and approaching people because they're gonna be looking at you crazy, especially if you don't speak the language. Um, so I would avoid that. Well, unless you at a mall, unless you at a place where you know, like you at a social gathering or something like that. Yeah, like, you can say that at a bar. That's a cold approach, right? Because you ain't never met, and and. Most, usually the chicks that's hanging out in them places they got a level of they've, they've there's a level of English fluency where you can get away with that you know what I'm saying so that would be a place I would do that at at the mall at the upper end at the upscale malls out there yeah you can probably get away with something like that I'm not going to say it's impossible but you definitely but for the you know average person Indonesian walking down the street nah it's not going to fly But if your language skills ain't up to par but, but yeah, even then, it's just kind of uncommon for people to talk to people that they don't know. So, uh, you know, meeting people through 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 friends or through acquaintances, that's more common. You know what I'm saying? That's more familiar. So you'll be, you get a lot more, you'll be, we'll be more receptive to, to speaking to you in that regard. Okay. Thank you, brother. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple more questions. Uh, what's the, how should men dress out there in Indonesia? Um, is it uh, wearing a suit or summer summer casual clothing? How do we dress out there, brother? Yeah, so, I saw some of them suits that you had on the Instagram, man. Don't come out there in no four five piece suits. Don't, <laughs> man, knock that off. <laughs> Not out there, man. <laughs> Maybe if you just you know what I'm saying you go into a wedding or something like for a few minutes, and it's hot. It's too hot for all that, man. Listen, you go out there, you got your polo shirt, and you're still gonna be sweating like a slave. You get your polo shirt. You get you a nice pair of jeans or a nice pair of uh, you know shorts, and you know some nice shades, and keep your shoes looking crisp. Man, you are gonna be all right. You ain't no need for that over, that overkill with the you know the Steve Harvey suit. Leave that. Leave, keep that. You don't need that in the in the in the uh, suitcase. Leave Steve Harvey at the house. Just come with the shorts and a nice shirt. And, Come with your cologne and come with your nice watch. You're gonna be all right. Okay. Um, would you say then, um, brothers should keep it very casual. Don't wear any diamonds or gold chain or gold watches. Obviously, it's a poor country. You might get robbed or targeted, right? Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, definitely. That's just the rule of thumb. Um, uh, but there's some places, man. Some of them places you, some of them spots you go to, like the place Obama used to live, was a place called Mintang. Mintang is like the upper upper echelon of Indonesia, right? The, the you go out there, you'll see billion dollar homes, like not million dollar homes, billion dollar homes, like you know, thirty bedrooms, that kind of stuff. So you go out there, man. Some of the people you go out, to some of them clubs in them areas, man. Your jewelry, you, you ain't shining enough. You know what I'm saying? Like you couldn't even compete. So just leave your little, leave your little three finger ring at the house. You know what I'm saying? So just. Just play it cool in general. You know, you got a little chain on. Ain't nobody gonna. I mean, you if you riding on the back of a motorcycle and you you know you out here trying to, you know you out here trying to floss like a, a uh, was it Paul Wall or somebody. You got one of the big rapper chains on. Somebody might snatch it off your neck. But 
you just got your little something, little bracelet on. I don't think you have no problems. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Um, next question for you, brother, is um, what's the ratio of women to men in Indonesia? Is it more women than men, more men than women, or 50 50? I never, I never, I never like just took account, but if I had to, if I had to just guesstimate, I just, I would say, yeah, it's more the, the more females than men, or more females. Is it, yeah, it's more females than men. Um, and it's, yeah, man, it's just so, go on out there, man. You ain't got to worry about that. Like, it's more than enough. <laughs> it's more than enough. Trust me. Okay. Thank you, brother. Um, N word use. Uh, did you hear the N word being used towards you or any black people out there in Indonesia? Yeah, I heard it occasionally, but it wasn't like it wasn't with no what? malice. It was no, but, but you got to understand, you got you got Africans out there. That's one group, and then you got, like I said, you got the black people of that society, the Ambonese, the Papuans. So you know what I'm saying. You go, you might hear it. You definitely gonna hear it. Um, just be, and plus the prevalent the the prevalence of of hip hop music is all over. The, like they listen to that stuff too. And they got their own versions of it with their own versions of nigga in there. You know what I'm saying? So, so, you, so bro, you're saying that the, the black people in Indonesia say it, but the non-black people in Indonesia don't say it. Or do they also say you know, it as I'm well? I'm saying, well, I'm, I'm going to say it. Like, if you hear it, you, yeah, it's going to be like non-black Indonesians. Like, oh, there was this cat. There was this, uh, there was this rapper. Uh, what was his name? Um, uh, 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 his name was Rich Chigga, Chigga Rich, Chigga Rich, or yeah, R Rich Chigga, I think it was called. But that his uh, his name was Chinese nigga. <laughs> so yeah, but he was like I said, his real name was Brian. He's super wealthy. You know what I'm saying? He come from a wealthy Chinese family. But Rich Chigga, Rich Chinese nigga. And so you, so that just gives you an indication like how they're using the words like within their circles. Yeah, of course. Uh, that, that, that doesn't sound too good to me, bro. I'm not happy about that. Uh, well, I, I mean, it's like it's in their in their little enclave amongst their people. You know what I'm saying? It's cool to them because they all, you know, what I'm saying they all listen to the hip hop culture. But once he once he understood that outside of Indonesia, that wasn't that wasn't cool. He changed his name. Now it's Rich Brian, but before it was it was it was Rich Chigger. Okay, brother. Um, the next question uh, for you, brother, is um, should brothers uh, uh, any dangers to be aware of in Indonesia, brother, that, that brothers should be aware of? Mm, the dangers. Um, well, the po well, unfortunately, I got to say this, like, you got to be, you really got to be on your P's and Q's about, yeah, the police are kind of like a predatory unit they can be and it's particularly around like if you go there around ramadan you know what i mean the police start to really amp up ramp up their their schemes and scams and like in terms of trying to trap you for so for example like if you walk into a grocery store right and it's for us it's common right we we walk we go to the grocery store we pay for what we got and some sometimes we'll take the receipt and sometimes not Right, just just because we don't think nobody's gonna try to accuse us of stealing stuff we just purchased, but out there, you know what I'm saying that that's one of the little scams they might hit you with. Like, oh, they didn't see you took, you know, they didn't see you take the receipt. You can't prove you bought it. Well, then you stole it, and you have to pay to get out of this or go to jail. So, so the police can be kind of predatory. Yeah, the police can be predatory, particularly around Ramadan, man. Luckily, Ramadan's over. Y'all should be in the, you know, coast is clear for the next. 11 months until they start up again and then y'all got to, like i said you early up be on your bunions because the police police are very i won't say just say the police like the crook the crime ramps up around ramadan you know what i mean it starts to get a little bit more treacherous just because people are trying to you gotta understand people left the the the, the what they call the compound compound is the village they don't left the village to you know strike it rich so to speak in the big city and so they got to have something to show for 
all this time that they've been they might have been out there just messing around, doing drugs, going to going to clubs and partying. But when they when it's time to go back, or what they call pool uh mudik, going back to the village, you've got to be you've got to be able to display some wealth. You know what I'm saying, or display some progress. So that's why a lot of a lot of crime and a lot of you know what I'm saying, a lot of stuff be happening around that time because you know all the and plus they got to take money home to the village. So they're trying to earn, you know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of social pressure from that perspective for them to come up with money. And, you know, and they'll, that's where it, that's when I found it was the best time to kind of lay low, you know, around, like I said, I stayed there for 10 years. So I ain't never really, I got, a, you know, I've been a victim of a couple, you know, petty crimes, but nothing, nothing major. You know what I'm saying? Um, speaking of that, brother, what do you mean? A pet pay crime vibe to you, bro. We but they they accept you. You got robbed, by bro. Yeah, I, got, I done got robbed by the um, you know, I but it's my fault to be quite honest. My fault. I can't, I can't, I gotta tell the truth. Shame the devil. I was in the um, in a taxi and uh, you know, coming out of one of the spots. This is during Ramadan, so you know, during the Ramadan, they're supposed to be shutting down. Well, they shut down like like 12 or one o'clock instead of four, you know what I'm saying? So they'll shut down at 12 or one. And I'm leaving one of the spots, and I'm woozy, you know what I'm saying? And man, I fall asleep in the taxi. Next thing I know, taxi, taxi driver and pulled over on the side of the road, and he's rummaging through my pockets. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so that kind of stuff. But that was my fault. You know what I mean? Okay, thank you. Leaving brother. myself vulnerable when I knew, when I knew that you know what I'm saying. This, you know what I'm saying. It was time to be on high alert as opposed to being there slipping like I was slipping. But I was young. I was real young right there. Last question, brother. Um, mm -hmm. Should brothers travel alone uh, to uh, Indonesia or travel in a group? And why? Mm, that's a good question. Um, me personally, me personally, I, I didn't, you know, like I said, I haven't been all over the bubble. I haven't been to Frisco, to Maine, all the way to Spain by myself. You know what I'm saying? Just... Just me, just my, because I don't need, I just didn't need no entourage. And I, you know, I was a bigger, you know, bigger, strong. I was much bigger and much stronger back then, more buff. And so I never felt uncomfortable anywhere I went. But, you know, some people need to go with, you know, it's, it's wiser. Obviously, it's wiser to go with other people. I was really stupid in that regard, like, you know, putting my, putting my fate in my hands and I could have been drugged, I could have been robbed. You know, luckily, I ha I don't have those experience. I hadn't had those experiences. So, me personally, it's I, I would say it's not necessary to travel with you know in a group. But if you know if you if you gotta, because normally when you got everybody gotta be on the same page when you got a group. When you when you got a group, you got some dudes like, oh man, I ain't got it, and some other dudes like, man, come on, let's go. You. I ain't had to worry about none of that. It's like, hey, man, it's, okay, you ain't got it, cool, I'm gone. And I'm on the plane and I'm where I'm at and doing what I do as opposed to, you know, you trying to wait for everybody to get their money together. He ain't got his money together. This person ain't got their money together. Oh, wait, let me get my, gotta wait till I get my check. Whatever, man. You know what I'm saying? So for me personally, it's always been easier. Fly this plane solo. You know what I'm saying? we we'll worry about we worry about the details when we get there. Like I never went nowhere with no itinerary, to be quite honest. I just kind of, you know, started, you know, I hit the ground and, you know, start shaking hands, kissing babies, and man, ten years later, I was, I was still all right. I met, I walked up out of there. Fantastic, brother. This has been a great Patreon hold. Up. Sorry, live stream hold on, brother. Um, shout out to Mill Walker eighty four for the one ninety nine dollar super chat. Thank you, bro, for the kind words. Uh, keep pushing, IP. We believe in you one hundred percent. Thank you, bro, for the kind words. Much love to you, Mill Walker eighty four. Uh, it means a lot to me, brother. Brother, please follow his lead. Hit the cash app. Hit the super chat. Support what I'm doing. Hit the super thanks. Um, support, support, support. It will mean a lot to me. Thank you, brothers. Mister C Travel Guy. Thank you very much. Uh, for um. Uh, taking part in this live stream uh before i open up the phone lines uh once again brothers um if you want to reach out to me directly here is a link to my instagram send me a dm follow me on instagram i'll get back to you as soon as possible um here's cash app 
this is open 24 7 so make sure you hit the cash apps when you can that'd be greatly appreciated um here's the link to the facebook group brothers so send your request into the facebook group i'll get back to you immediately uh i'm also on twitter as well brothers so please uh follow me on twitter send me a dm on twitter i'll get back to you and last but not least brothers i'm also on patreon if you want to hear the explicit version of this stream uh, that me and sh have a guy recorded last week you'll find that on the page one diamond here awesome so let me open up the phone lines uh please call in if you can't call in you must cash up or super chat your questions okay call in let's do this any thoughts you want to add brother man I, man shout out to the to the community to all the all the brothers out there and like I said, I hopefully, hopefully, I haven't said anything that's going to discourage you. Hopefully, if anything, encourage you. And if you, like I said, if you do hit it up, man, come back and and you know, and, and share the playbook, man. Would you? What did you find? What did you find it helpful? Did you find any information helpful, or if it just didn't apply to you, you know what I'm saying? Share, share back. Report back to headquarters, man. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you for that, uh, brother. Much love to you, bro. Much appreciation, bro. Um, so, brothers, uh, you know what it is, brother. So, um, uh, call in. If you can't call in, um, hit the super chat and cash apps for your questions. Okay. I can't. I can't see the stream. Is it is the stream available? Is it on YouTube? Oh, oh yes, wait, look at my phone. I think I got an alert on my phone. Let me let me check it out. Oh, there it is. Let's see. Feel free to call in, brothers. Let me turn that down. Okay. Okay, let me see this. Wait, it doesn't show me. It doesn't show the live chat. Let me see. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. Vindictive like Western women here by crypto. Shout out to crypto. <laughs> oh, wait. Do I, should I be answering these questions or just? I'm sorry. I don't know. They're down for okay. the calling, brother. <laughs> Or okay, they'll super chat, catch up the question. Okay. <laughs> Rub me toes. All right. Oh. Man. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. All right, brothers, uh, call in. Uh, don't be shy. If you can't call in, catch up and super chat your questions. I know it's a Monday. Um, but I thought I'd make up for it as we were supposed to have it yesterday, but the brother has something else going on. So I yeah, to I do apologize, today. brother. Do apologize that I couldn't. Um, it was Mother's Day over here in the states. Um, man, it was Mother's Day in the states, so I was took my mother and my aunt to go eat dinner. So I do apologize, fellas. No problem, bro. I've got a super chat, brother. Uh, shout out to Bro Harris for the five dollar super chat. Thank you, bro. Much love to you. He says, what's Jakarta like? Um, mm. Maybe in, in general, brother. In general, man, Jakarta is, um, man, it's like, well, okay. I don't know where he's, I don't know where he's from. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. If you're from, if you're from the States, I would say the, a big, a comparison to Jakarta would be like New York City. Uh, yeah, because we don't. Well, San Francisco, no, not even San Francisco, but New York City is probably what I would compare Jakarta to, and just in terms of the size and the expanse of it, because, you know, New York, you've got five boroughs, so the city is spread out, like, amongst a super wide area, just the New York City, we ain't talking about, like, the Long Island, I mean, Long Island is, I guess, part of New York City, but we ain't talking about, like, the suburbs of New York, way out, like the Roosevelt's and the, and the, um, uh, uh, what's what's the place that I'm thinking? Uh, uh, Rock, Rockaway, Rockaway. No, what am I thinking? Rochelle, New Rochelle, all them kind of places. New York, like Jakarta, has got that expanse 
as well. Like you got um, uh, uh, Tang Tangarang is like a super big community in West Jakarta, and then you got uh, where I lived. It was a place called um, what's it called Jakarta Selatan, which is South Jakarta, and you got a place got places like Kemang, Kuningan, just super big my super big enclaves with just tons of little places and places and spaces to go and you can go to restaurants and bars and all these different places got like nooks and crannies so even my whole 10 years i had there's still parts of Jakarta i had never seen just because it's just so big and i had never like even though i'm saying it's all in one city it might take you two or three hours to get to the other part of the city because traffic is also hella bad you know what i'm saying so it's places that i wouldn't even go just because the traffic is just going to be so ridiculous. So I'm like, man, I'm not even like North Jakarta is a place that I never, I went to a few times, but it wasn't a spot I would hang out. You know what I'm saying? Until I moved, until I moved closer, I moved to East Jakarta as uh, you know, my last year, two years when I was there. And I, then I started going to places in North Jakarta a bit more because I was closer and it'd take me long to get there. So, you know what I'm saying? So Jakarta is just super duper massive, man. It's like, you got and you got tons and tons and tons of different like little communities. You got African communities, you got Chinese communities, Indian. Uh, you got still got a big Dutch community out there. You got Australian communities. Man, it's an international city with with all the little trappings you can you can want. You know, like all the Western food you want, like you want McDonald's, KFC, all that stuff. They got that. You you know, Church's chicken. I don't know if y'all eat that garbage. They got that. Um, uh, you want like fine dining, Roof Chris Steakhouse. They got that. You know what I'm saying? Applebee's and Chevy's and all. They got that too. You know what I'm saying? So it's nothing you can. There's nothing you can want from a Western perspective that they don't have in Jakarta. But you go outside of Jakarta, you know that some of these things are just not accessible. So awesome. that's thank. Mm -hmm. Oh, come, bro. No, I'm saying that's the best way to put it. It's a, it's a super big multicultural megatropolis city that you you can definitely get lost in and but you can have a whole lot of fun you can have a whole lot of great experiences right there in that city alone awesome thank you brother thank you for the super chat Ro harris um shout out to will cook for the five dollar super chat thank you brother i found your channel about a week ago and i've been blown away by all the knowledge thanks for all the game respect from florida thank you both for the kind words will cook i'm happy that Man, I Will Cook, I had a, I had a pot, I had one of my good partners. Uh, his name was, um, what was his name? My bad, Doug. My friend, his name was Doug from Wildwood. We worked together in, uh, he was from Wildwood, Florida, and we worked together in uh, Indonesia. And unfortunately, he passed away two two years ago. So respect to you from Florida, but my partner Doug, Doug Lafrit, Le, 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 Le what was his name? I got, a, I forgot his last name. But we worked together for a few years in Indonesia. Wildwood, Florida, man. He he went back to Saudi Arabia. And that was the last time I seen him. Of course, he passed away. So shout out to you, Will Cook. Thank you, Will Cook. I appreciate you, bro. Um, rest in peace to your friend, brother. Um, John, John and Sterling, can you turn your cameras on in the background real quick? Just so I know you're not a troll. John, confirmed. Thank you, Miss International, confirmed. Thank you, bro. Turn your cameras off. Let me bring in Miss International. How you doing, brother? Long time no speak. You good? <laughs> yeah, long time no speak, but I'm always here for the uh for the lives, man. Kevin Samuels, one Argentina, et cetera, et cetera, man. What's up, IP? I'm happy to be here and talk to you um for a long time. I haven't talked to you, man. What's up? Hey, all good, brother. All good, man. Just uh, Sterling, you're confirmed, brother. Thank you, bro. Um, just been um turn your camera off, Sterling, if you want to. Um, just been uh, working on the channel, brother um pushing out content how are you brother everything good yeah i'm good man and i also want to uh shout out the guest speaker man you've been in uh indonesia for 10 plus years or you said 10 years something like that if i heard bro and that is a major accomplishment man and i just want to say uh much respect to you and i've seen a few uh indonesian girls so it's cool that um my man ip covering all the bases and that he got another speaker from another country man if people like the one guy that just uh said uh 
a chat, you know, a cash chat or whatever you mean. And he was talking about how he just found your uh, channel, man. It's amazing because, like, the people that just find your channel, they really look through, man. They're covering at least 50. You're covering at least 50 countries, you know, right off the bat with your videos, man. So it's amazing. So shout out to the guest speaker and shout out to this channel. Shout out to you. Shout out to you, brother. Shout out to Miss International. You have no questions regarding Indonesia to our guest? Well, shoot. Heck yeah, man. Um, so, uh, if not, Bali, it's all good, but I can, I can go to another call yeah, and come yeah, at you after. I got, you know, I got, okay. the, come on, IP. You know, I got the good uh, questions. You know what I mean? I won't ever hop in this box unless I'm asking a side question. So, you've been there for 10 years, brother. Um, what are the, the, I maybe I might have missed this. Uh, you might have already answered this, but what are the best places like to go in your opinion out of all the time you've been there um, regarding um, Bali and um, Jakarta? If you've been to both, mm. uh, Bali is more man. Bali is primarily like a uh, it's a vacation spot. You know, it's a holiday tourism spot. So what you're gonna find in Bali is a lot of a lot of um, Australians. What they <laughs> there's a as a, there's a what do you call it there's a, a a term that they call the australians there that come there to kind of uncultured well in america we probably would call them white trash but in there they will call them they call them bogans bogans are like you know australians ain't never been nowhere ain't got no ain't got no class so to speak so they go around there they just you know shirts off drink they just drink or sun down sun up cause the trouble me personally that ain't my scene man i don't really i don't really like that that particular kind of makeup i'm not going nowhere to fight man i'm going somewhere to chill and be cool and look at something and see what i can see and then you know what i'm saying i'm not going for all the other shenanigans so um but a lot of you know B bali is more like an international tourist destination so you got a lot of people from all over the world uh like I said, but you got a lot of those australians that i'm talking about the roughneck australians and for me, it's just not a good mix. Me personally, I don't, I don't enjoy that thing. But that's that may be your scene. They do got some beautiful beaches. They got a lot of wildlife. They've got, you know, surfing. A lot of people go there to surf. They got some good surf, surfing waters, diving. They got all of that. But um, that's not my thing. I'm not into that. Um, so Jakarta for me was definitely better. Um, like I said, it's still. It had that international vibe. It still has that international vibe because you got people from all over the world. Um, uh, there's tons and tons. Of, there's way more people in, in in Jakarta than there is in Bali, just because Bali is just it's a smaller island. It's a lot more people from you know all over the all over the world. It's a lot. It's a lot laid. It's a lot more laid back too. Like you don't have a lot of um, the police ain't ain't as you know the police ain't as ain't as shysty over there because they want to keep tourists there, so they don't really. They don't, I mean, they because you know you got people pulling all kind of shenanigans with the drugs and all kind of stuff that's going on over there in Bali, man. So you know, the police they, they they're on, they're on alert for that kind of stuff. Like if you out there trying to buy drugs, and that's where it can get a little dicey for you. But if you just out there and just trying to enjoy yourself on the beach drinking your beers or drinking whatever you drink or you stay in the hotel or you just you know going to the beach parties man ain't they're not gonna mess with you i mean if you, you know you got pickpockets and all that kind of stuff but that's to be expected so um but jakarta was more my thing just because you know, it was way more wide open it was a hella hella places like you can just you can just stumble upon some stuff because it's just so big and you know what i'm saying i had i had all, a lot of my friends were there i made a ton of friends not just uh not just like expat friends but tons of local friends man I, that was home it was home man it's home for me i could still you know i feel right i'd be right at home if i went back tomorrow okay hey, all bro. right thanks hey. for that I, uh, on, bro. Do you have one, one more question brother yeah yep yep i gotta ask this another banger question that um you know sells all to the next guy so Bro, you, I, I hear that you're saying there's a lot of different races and a lot of different um, types of people that go out there, right? So um, if that's been there for a long time, there have to be mixed race Indonesian girls mixed with whatever, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? Mixed race mm -hmm. girls. So um, and you can stay there. Um, it can, if you had, if I tell you the name three, right, it can be 
straight up Indonesian. It could be Indonesian mixed with um, African American, or you know, whatever it can be. You know what I mean? Name the three baddest. Uh, like, if you could, like, if you can, like, tell, like you said, because you've been there for a while, so maybe you could tell what's up here in Indonesia and what's up, whatever. Name the three baddest, like, races of women that you've seen there, like, in in general, like, if you could. Mm, okay, that's a good one. Uh, for, my, for my money, if you can find something that's Javanese and Chinese mix, if you can find one of them, oh, man, that's the, that's, that's, that's number one for me in terms of, there that racial makeup because when you when you talk about like racial mixture or like you know racial mixing like i like i like the racial mixes where you can see like features from both of them so you can for instance like you see a japanese and a black like a naomi osaka right she got the best of both both of those cultures in terms of like physical features you know what i'm saying so you see a japanese and a black mix that that those have they have very distinctive looks or f- very distinctive physical traits where you can see both in them or any type of North e- Asian and black mix you're gonna get like that th- those distinctive traits but when you mix like with Indonesians because some of them are already fairly mixed like some of them like I said there's a there's a huge history there's a long history of Dutch colonization so a lot of them a lot of them already have a European blood, so when they mix with other Europeans, then they just become like racially ambiguous. Like you know, so I just can't tell if they like I knew they're kind of white, but what kind of white? Like I, you can't tell. So when they when they mix though, like with like I said, a, a, a Javanese and a Chinese, that's when you start seeing like the distinctive features, like from both sides, and you see like you still get the dark skin, but then you get the curly hair and. That's when is you know or the or the Ambonese Ambonese like the the, the darker people kind of like Polynesians of their of their of, of their ethnic groups they're like the salt the Tongans and Samoans they're like or Fijian they are great they're like in that family or in that uh, what you call it genetic strain I suppose so if you got like an Ambonese or and a Javanese like you'll see like the strong dark skin but really curly hair or really light eyes like you'll see all those feet the best of those those features kind of blended together so yeah that's that's how it's that's the best way i can explain it okay all right thank you miss international much thank appreciation you. brother let me bring in uh, john um what's going on john how are you doing brother my mod hey good evening ip how's everything uh, it's all good brother how are you brother you okay yeah I'm doing good. Um, I, I guess I have uh, this two quick questions. Um, in, in regards to Jakarta, um, how, how would you compare it to Manila? Like, I, I've been to Manila back in 2019, and one thing that was interesting is, like, on one block, you could see um, multi-million dollar apartments and buildings and the next block it's like third world mm-hmm. oh yeah okay thanks for the question brother um yeah i was it, I, I, that's that's a feature that's common in all of southeast asia to be quite honest man it's just like yeah they don't have those barriers between like the rich and the poor like we do in western countries like where there's a clear line of demarcation so yeah as a brother said you can have a five-star Five star, uh, excuse me, hotel and 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 mall, right next to this little, you know, right next to a, a little, uh, w- w- like a slum, yeah, a slum with like a river, yeah, literally. They some of them places like there's a, uh, this one place I'm thinking about this mall that they just propped up, they propped it up. It's like a 13 story apartment complex with a with a billion dollar mall, you know, in front of it. And then next door to it, you got kids pissing in the river. You know what I'm saying? And you got a whole little slum, little little shack slum. This is right next door, so you have poverty in the. So yeah, it's that it exists. To get, I mean, they they coincide like that. There is no separation between the rich and the poor, like that. Uh, the thing that's different about Manila that I had to say that that I noticed that was pretty stark, like the contrast between both of those places is the presence of the, the guns in Manila. Like Manila, I saw, you know, the dudes in the, I forgot what they call them, them little 
buggy jeeps or whatever the buggy buggy vans that go around picking people up. Oh, they the stra- jeepneys, yeah, yeah, the jeepney. They strapped. You know what I'm saying, dude? Hanging right. off the, he hanging off the side of the bus with the with the with the pistol hanging out of his pocket. You know what I'm saying? And the dude at the check cashing place, he got an M16. You know what I'm saying? He, or a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, they got some man. Yeah. The Philippines is. That's the difference. Like you ain't gonna see no. You're not gonna see guns unless it's in Indonesia. You're not gonna see guns unless it's like they're military police, or they're, excuse me, they're military or they're they're with the police. Those are the only times you'll see people with with pistols. But in the Philippines, man, I saw people riding down the street with guns strapped tied to you know strapped around their shoulders. They got guns everywhere. So that was the only thing that kind of made me a little apprehensive was just the presence of the guns, man. Right. Um, my other question is in regards to real estate. Like, I know a lot of countries is prohibit, like prohibitions for foreigners owning real estate. Do you know about how the law is in Indonesia? Yeah, I mean, it ain't no different. I mean, like I said, most, okay. most, most of these places that we're talking about were former colonies, right? So they really are apprehensive about foreigners owning land. You know what I'm saying? So they have their tight restrictions in terms of of people who can buy if you want to buy property there you you'd have to either be married or one of your your children or you'd have to like let's say you had a you were married previously you ain't married now but you would have to if you had a child who was a citizen you would have to use them as a cutout to buy the land you know what i'm saying and 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 that can be kind of dicey sometimes too so you know it ain't just it ain't cut and dry like that like you know what i mean there's these some stipulations even having like they know you have a, a foreign parent you know what i'm saying sometimes there's time restrictions like you might only can uh, buy the land for 99 years and then after that 99 year you got to prove that you, your citizenship all kind of there's all kind of shenanigans that um that me personally made me apprehensive about buying anything or starting a business there that's the one thing i would not want to do Oh, okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Mm-hmm. Thank you, John. Appreciate Thank you, man. Mod. Appreciate you, John. Uh, let me bring in Mr. Sterling. Will Cook, I see you, brother. Thank you very much. Um, let me bring in Mr. Sterling. Um, how are you doing, Sterling? You okay, bro? What's up, IP? Yeah, man. Good to hear from you. Good to hear Can from you, you hear too, Sterling. No time. Loud and, loud and clear, brother. Loud and clear. How are you? I'm doing well, man. I'm in the gym, but I got a few questions. I'm going to let you guys uh, go ahead. Um, number one, um, um, is the gym culture heavy there? Uh, did you ever meet any girls So you know, when the gym consistently lifting weights, trying to build a body? Man, that's a great question. Uh, I, don't, what's his, I don't know the brother's name, but shout out to the brother, man. Um, yeah, you know what, Jim, for a long time, gym culture wasn't very big man it wasn't it wasn't prevalent but like i said the mall like i think we was if you've been on the stream long enough i was talking about how the mall kind of is like the center of 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 all the, like the social aspect of, of social life down there well there's like that's where you're gonna find the gyms the gyms are in the malls and so yeah now oh yeah it's definitely becoming more popular especially like you know girls ain't you know they ain't flying to brazil to get no bbls they doing the <laughs> They doing the butt, uh, everybody doing it, but you can't get on the squat machine. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody Word. got their ass in the mirror and they doing the, the squats and all that. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's catching on. Yeah, it's definitely. It's becoming more popular. So now the likelihood of you seeing, like you meeting a chick that's like fitness oriented. Oh, yes. They got tons of that. CrossFit is really big out there. Um, hot yoga. All that stuff. Yeah, so fit, the fitness industry is, is that's one of the gro- highest growth. Mar- I knew a cat. Um, well, I knew a cat that I was out there with. He had started up a gym. His gym was doing really, really well. He's charging people essentially like, you know, $70 a month for them to, you know, do like spin classes like in a hot Dang. room. And, yeah. Yeah, man. So he's getting his money out there. Gyms, fitness in general is a really big growth industry out there. Okay. I didn't, I wasn't expecting that. Um, another thing. So I hear you talking about the, the currency exchange rate. And I was surprised because I thought, you know, I'm here in the U.S. I thought Me the too. dollar would probably go more. So let's just say, since you say seventy dollars for a gym membership, I mean that's expensive here in the United States, seven dollars a month. So right. like, let's just say, let's just say I want to be out there for six months, and my budget for apartment will be eight hundred U.S. dollars a month. 
how good of an apartment would they get me? Oh man, you're gonna be winning. You're gonna be winning, man. You might get you a two bedroom, two bath with a you know swimming pool. I'll give you an example from my apartment that I was that I lived in, that I had uh, before I left. I was paying roughly four hundred thirty dollars a month, and I had a two bedroom, had a swimming pool. You know what I'm saying? I could have a maid come through, you know, once or twice a week. You know, main laundry, send my laundry downstairs. I'm paying probably ten dollars a week for the laundry, maybe. Um, so, no, what I'm talking about, what I, what I, what I was saying by, by illustrating the cost of that gym membership was because these, the places that these gyms are, they're in like the upper, you know what I'm saying, the upper classes yeah. of the of the Indonesian society. But that's how much they're willing to fork over to get these lessons. You know what right. I'm saying? Because my man was from Australia, you know what I mean, big buff dude, bodybuilding kind of thing. So he was getting his thing off the ground, but that's how much he was charging. And he was getting, he was getting his money. He's still getting his money. So, it okay. just, like I said, the fitness thing is, 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 it is blowing up. It is a growth industry out there. So it. One more, so one more we, question, bro. One okay, more. okay, okay. Last thing, last thing. Which I think it's important too. So, um, what is the percentage you think of uh, people who speak English out there? So if we learn maybe like conversational Indonesian, that mm -hmm. would take us pretty far. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but if you, but like I said, you talking about the gym, them kind of thing, like, you know what I'm saying? If you go in in them circles, like, cause they got, they don't got Planet Fitness, but they got something similar. It's called Celebrity Fitness. And then they had like a place called Fitness First. And then they got Gold's Gym. Gold's Gym is still big out there. So if you meet anybody in them circles, them people going to speak English. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you already, you know what I'm saying? If those are the places you frequent. You going to meet, you going to meet people. I mean, men and women. Who are in there, you know what I'm saying, getting their fitness on and they all speak English pretty much. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Thank you for the intel, man. Appreciate yeah, you, man. Uh, IP. All right. Thank you, Sterling. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, brother. Welcome back. Right, take care. Um, take care, Sterling. Real quick, I see you, brother. Um, shout out to Mr. Jack the Janitor. Thank you, brother, uh, for the five dollar super chat. Much appreciation to you, Jack the Janitor. Thank you very much for your support. Uh plenty of random folks walk around with stun and tasers everywhere in Manila. Don't play games. Yes, indeed. Thanks for that, Jack. Um, I don't think Manila is in Indonesia, brother. Um, no, it's not in Indonesia, but like you said, man, it's not a place you want to go around. You got to be on your P's and Q's in Manila, man, because the, the gun to people ratio is extremely high. They are out there strapped, and they do not mind killing you. For, Jeez. Yeah, seriously, man. You can't play around in Manila, man. Okay, is that police or the random folks in general? People. Just, I'm just, everybody's yeah. strapped. Everybody's strapped. Okay. All right, thank you, bro. Uh, real quick, can I bring you uh, with your camera on or do you want to turn it off? Give me a thumbs up. Okay. All right, let, let me bring in Will Cook. Mr. Will Cook, how you doing, brother? You okay? I'm blessed tonight. How you fellas doing tonight? Uh, oh, doing chilling, okay, brother. Chilling, brother. Doing, chilling. doing okay, brother. Thank you, brother. What questions do you have for us, Will Cook? And welcome to the channel as well, bro. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I just got three, three quick questions. But uh, before I ask them, I just want to say I appreciate your IP for everything that you're doing, man. I found your channel not too long ago, and uh, it's just opened my eyes to so many more possibilities, man. So I appreciate uh, appreciate all the knowledge you're dropping. And to uh, uh, what's uh, Mr. International? Is that your name, brother? Um, uh, oh, SCA travel guy. SCA Southeast Asia travel guy. That's that'd be me. Travel guy. Hey, uh, my condolences to your friend that that passed away in Florida not too yeah, long ago. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so I got I got three questions. Two of them you can just knock them off real quick, and then the third one is a little bit more thoughtful. Uh, so the first question is, uh, uh, Mr. Travel God, how many how many places ha have you been to? I know you said uh, Indonesia, and what was the other places you've been to? Uh, I've been to um, I've been to Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, uh, South Korea. I've been to Japan. Been to Taiwan. I've been to uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain. I've been to Malaysia, uh, Vietnam, and Mexico. That's pretty much it. Uh, pretty much it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've only I've only really been. I've never been traveled outside of U.S. So, man, just kind of stayed in Don't the, worry. Don't worry. You're going to, I mean, it's going to happen for you, brother. If you determine to make it happen, it's going to happen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The channel is definitely giving me motivation to make some moves. But uh, my second question is, uh, 
and you can knock them off as fast as you want to, brother. For a new traveler, what are three what are three tips you would give a new traveler traveling overseas? Okay, first of all, um, first of all, the world is a big place, so you really got to kind of map out where you want to go. That's that's the, that'd be the first thing. Map out where you want to go. Me personally, I would pick a place to where you could hit a few different countries in one kind of go. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's your first time. So right. For instance, my first time that I'd been out of the country was uh, Vietnam. Vietnam is real close to Thailand. It's real close to um, uh, uh, Burma. You know what I'm saying? It's close to all these different. It's co- close to all these other places, so you can hit them up while you're there. So I would say, yeah, kind of map out, scope out the areas you want to go to first. Do some, do your, do your research. You know what I'm saying? What time of year should you go? Because some of these, some of these places got extreme weather. You know, especially like the Philippines, right? You don't want to go at the wrong time of year and get caught in a typhoon. You know what I'm saying? Ruin your whole right. trip. You know what I'm saying? You've been saving up for, for years, and you you stuck in, in a hotel or you underwater. So you got to really do your research about, you know, where you want to go first and foremost, but then what, t- what's, when's the best time to go? You know what I mean? Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is have your money, man. You don't want to be out there scraping. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be scraping by trying to, you know, s- scrap, you know, save a little bit here and there. You want to go out and kind of experience. You don't, you don't want to go out and trick all your money off, but at the same time, you, you want that to just be one less worry you have. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you got your, you know, make sure you got your reservations for your hotel, your Airbnb paid up before you go. And then, you know, make sure that you got, um, make sure your visa is, 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 is in order because a lot of countries will get you, like if you overstay your visa, you know what I'm saying? Then they'll start hitting you $30, $40 a day. You know what I'm saying? That Man, you ain't got the money. You ain't leaving. You're right. You know what I'm saying? So you could get yourself in trouble like that. And then third, just go with an open mind. Just be willing to experience new things and and do new things. And, you you know, kind of like be like a yes man. Don't say no. You know what I mean? Somebody say you want to go check out this volcano? Don't say no. You want to go? You want to have some camel meat? Don't say no. <laughs> you want to eat some iguana? Don't what? say no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my advice. All right. I appreciate it. And the third question, you kind of. You kind of alluded to it. My third question, I guess, kind of bleeds into your last response was uh, mindset. Mindset on going to new places. Where I'm at right now is uh, I'm excited and a little nervous because it's just something I've never done before. You know what I mean? Not not fearful, just nervous and and excited at the same time. And uh, where you at? In Florida. Okay. Oh, you never been to Florida? Are you not from Florida? What, what's the no, deal? No, I'm, I'm I'm in Florida, Temple, Florida. No, I'm saying you are you from Florida originally, or are you from like New York or something? No, nah, born and raised Temple, Florida. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I never really wanted Indonesia. Really wasn't on the map for me, but I knew I wanted to be over there on that side at one point in time. Mm-hmm. But I got to looking up like plane tickets from where I'm at, bro, and from where I'm at in, 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 in Florida, I can go to all these South American countries for like two, three hundred dollars as a plane ticket. So I'm looking to book one maybe in about a month or two. So if you can just talk about the mindset, I know you already alluded to it on the pre on your previous answer, but if you can you and the fellas on the panel, if you guys can kind of expand on the on, Oh, my bad, some crazy cats over here in my yard. My bad. <laughs> I, I, I'll just tell you from my perspective. Yeah, the reason why I, like I said, the reason why Asia was my first stop was kind of like what you said. I'm I'm on the West Coast, so you know, uh, Japan is an eight hour flight. Um, Korea is a is an eight hour flight for me, a nine hour flight, and Indonesia is another eight hour flight from there. So, um, so that those are just in terms of proximity. You know, those are just closer to me. But you on that side. On that side of the country, so yeah, of course, you know, you might hit some, you might hit Panama or Costa Rica or whatever the case is. Wherever you go, like I said, be on your P's and Q's. Those other, those other things, definitely have those in order. You don't want to go there when your money funny because you just don't want to limit your experiences. But and then, after if you got all of those in a row, 
then just go out there with the mindset that you you're gonna have a good time, that you're gonna be open to new experiences, man. That you ain't gonna, like I said, don't go don't go out there looking for other. You know, some people want to go out and click up with other Americans. Me, I wasn't trying to do that, man. I'm like, yo, man, let me let me you know meeting one or two people is cool, but I ain't trying to be in they click and just do what they doing. Like, you know, let me let, let me explore let me you know you don't want to go too far and obviously you want to listen to wise counsel because some people been there longer than you they know some of the pitfalls that you don't know of and so they can give you game in that regard but so yeah just be open and like i said don't be closed-minded don't just be you know try the food try the local food try to speak the language and and you know just just go out there and, and do that yeah thank you very much sca real quick thank you bro i'm going to have to end the stream now uh, over here, pretty late over here in the UK, bro. And let's get some sleep. So okay. thank you, Will Cook. Hopefully, I'll speak to you and speak to you in the near future. We're okay. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Hey, uh, I, I know you got a, a fa what, what's your group called? Uh, the Facebook group. So um, I'll put it on the live stream chat, brother, and you, you can send a request in, okay, Will Cook. And I'm also on Instagram as well. Okay, bye. All right, I, pre I appreciate you guys. Y'all stay blessed. Stay All right, blessed, thank brother. you, brother. Thank yep. you, bro. Um, shout out to uh, Sterling Petty for the four ninety nine dollars super chat. Much appreciation to you, brother, for the support. Much love. Thank you, brother. So, brother, this has been a great stream, brother. Uh, before I end the stream, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who called in. Thank you, John. Thank you to every other caller. Thank you to those who super chat, who, who super chatting in cash app today. Greatly appreciated, um, Mr. SCA Travel Guy. Um, actually, hold on, John. Do you have any closing statements, brother? Nah, this is thanks for the stream. Uh, awesome, brother. Thank you, bro. Uh, SCA Travel Guy, do you have any closing statements, brother? Man, I want, like I said, uh, you know, COVID, uh, yeah, also COVID, you know, put a little damper on our travel plans. Uh, you know, make sure that you you know what the regulations are before you go in terms of, like, your COVID testing. But other than that, man, if everything's in order. I hope you guys found some interesting tidbits in here i hope um you guys get out there man get out there and see it for yourself don't take my word for it get out there and remember report back to headquarters <laughs> awesome. hey thank you for that that's it yeah. have a guy thank you brother much appreciation brother i'll reach Definitely. out to you afterwards uh i want to say a huge thank you for you for doing this stream i learned a lot it means a lot to me brother thank you very much bro okay no problem awesome brother uh, so, brothers, um, if you didn't have a chance to super chat, make sure you can also hit the super thanks. It's a new feature that you can find under the video where you can send some donations in even after the, the video finished streamings or even on previous uploads or previous live streams. Feel free to hit the super thanks um, and donation. Hit the cash up as well. That's open 24-7. Um, it's been a, a great, um, great live stream. And um, I will see you, brothers. Um, it's been a great live stream. Uh, we've got a couple live streams uh, this week. Um, hopefully, we'll get the South Korea live stream popping. Uh, and then we have the Spain live stream this week as well, which should be um, very fascinating. I've not touched upon Spain for a couple years now. So um, I'm looking forward to that. But I'm definitely looking forward to the South Korea live stream. And um, uh, make sure you, you join the Patreon to watch the explicit version of this Indonesian stream. Okay, brothers, thank you very much, and I'll see you, brothers, next time.